in this episode of the tripod like for me a style should be developed naturally it shouldn't be forced if you're forcing something especially in photography it's 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 not meant to happen okay like something like photography it's meant to come from your unconscious mind which is just unforced like you know and it happens naturally so welcome to the tripod Hello everybody, welcome to episode 46 of The Tripod. My name is Sean O'Reardon, I am the youngest host of this podcast, don't you forget that. And don't I'm joined on this lovely evening by Quivine Hennessy. Kev, it is, how are we it doing? It is a lovely evening, isn't it? It's, it's fierce windy out there at the moment. Yeah, it's windy, but it was nice. Um, yeah, if that, it was nice. If that it works in the same sentence, <laughs> maybe it, it doesn't. Does look- Windy can be nice, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Not, not for drone flying, but, you know. No, no. Uh, Speaking of drone flying, you posted a delicious, uh, I can only describe it as delicious. Thank you. Photograph this evening, as uh, this evening being the 13th of March, as we are recording. Yes. And it's a twin tennis court shot this time. Oh, yeah. As opposed to the same oh, yeah. one. And just it just screams up. symmetry. It's just, it's symmetry plastered all over it. So I was thinking about that, right? Do you know what? Like, obviously, yes, it, t- it takes a while to like level it up and you have to get all the levels correct. And, you know, you do that like individually in Lightroom and that kind of stuff. And obviously, even when you're taking the shot, you have to make sure you're lining it up correctly and, and all of that kind of stuff, right? But really, the people who designed the tennis court and people who, you know, who planned it and executed the, the, the presentation of that tennis court yeah. are the ones who really should get the credit. You know, yeah. like you know, Sykes. Sykes yes. is is an Instagrammer, and he he is like the king of symmetry. Like he's an architect uh, by trade, or at least he's training to be an architect. I'm not sure if he's fully qualified yet. Um, but you, like that that comes true in his photography, like in abundance, because like he's all about the symmetry. But and yes, it it, it takes a lot of skill to execute it. But the people who who like design and, and build these buildings, phenomenal work. Like I mean, it's graphics, it's isn't graphics, it? Like it's, it's so good though. Mm. Like, it's all parallel lines, yeah. perpendicular lines, symmetry. Yeah, measurements. Like, yeah, they deserve a lot of credit because Ever. you know, if I actually I remember Sykes sent me one photo, and I think it's a, there's a hotel in Dublin. I wish I could remember what it was, but there's one brick out of place. And he just oh. said he, he, he can never post it. Like he's like, I can't. He's like, it it, it kills me. He See, I'd look fun. at that as kind of making it a bit unique, maybe. You know? Nah, they just messed up. <laughs> like, okay, they, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they just they just messed up, and he was like, he's like, it, it kills me. He has to pass it every day, and he's like, it 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 pains him to go past this building. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it was a lovely, lovely image, Kev. Thank so. you, thank you very much. Good stuff. Um, did you take that um this week or when did no, you take that? Ages no. ago. A long time ago. Oh um, come on! And you, I, 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 see, I respect that. I respect that. I respect someone who can take an image, a, a very good image, and sit on it for yeah. weeks and months on end. Like I, ju- I just, for, I just forgot I had it. To be honest, um. You that many good images in your drawer that you just yeah yeah out. no it just yeah. like, I, it was on a different memory card that I would from one I'd normally use so I was just going back through them all and I found see them I there. only have one I only have one memory card oh my god shot my so, camera listeners you probably all know this by now but for the first four years of me taking photos I'm not going to say it as a photographer because I wasn't a photographer then but I took a lot of photos I didn't have any external storage hard drives backups any of that so i either had to delete a lot of photos which I, which i have done and it pains me to say i've deleted thousands of photos even from gigs and stuff which kills me um or i had to just buy new memory cards so i have i'd say eight eight to ten 64 gig memory cards mm. probably three or four 32 gigs and a couple of 16 gigs jesus um <clears throat> okay yeah ridiculous. I, I, no i do have i probably have eight to ten sd cards with yeah. mate, which are a mixture between 32 and 64 but just see what you're not realizing kev is the z6 takes oh yeah XQD, yeah yeah and, and they're about seven grand <laughs> cost a mortgage to buy an xqd <laughs> yeah, card. ridiculous like, like a 32 gigabyte xqd ladies and gentlemen cost 120 euros oh I my mean, god like I, I I went down there uh, the other day to buy a 64 gig 
and I saw a price. I was like, it was upwards of two hundred quid, and I was like, let's I actually like that's the price can, of that's that's get, a half a half a lens, like sometimes. Can you get an adapter, and then no. get like no, of course not, of course no. not. No XQD, they say never fails and all this and that, but ah uh, yeah, but like I've, I've never, I've, I've, I've never, I've never <laughs> won. I've never no. had uh, an SD card fail. Oh no. no. Touch wood. The Z50, with the Z50, at least I have this. Uh, I can use them, and I can use it with the drone and everything. But besides Still, the point, like, do you know what I mean? Like, Lord, that's why I, rec- I, re- I was recommending some people buy the Z5, just literally save the, the save on cost, so, like they can yeah. use their current SD cards. Anyway, we are um, already going down a rabbit hole on a tangent. Today's oh, episode yeah. is a really interesting one, and I think you'll find it very, very interesting, some great insights in it. So we're talking about your style as a photographer. And you're developing your style. Do you need to develop a style? Is it essential? How can you do that? We're also talking about, and this is a one, uh, a topic that came in from Connor on Instagram. So thank you, Connor. And thank you to everyone who sent in some fantastic Which replies Connor? to my stories uh, last week about t- podcast topics. There's some fantastic ones sent in. But Connor said, how do you know when you're a good photographer? Like at what stage could you start saying you're a good photographer? Which I thought was really interesting. So we're going to discuss that. And finally, we have a Your Shot feature from Dara Garman. Dara is Lighthouse Industries on Instagram is his handle. Um, but a fantastic uh, wave image they're taking in the recent storm. So jam-packed episode, which I really think you're going to enjoy. Oh, so, yeah. Kev, strap yourselves in, lads. We're just going to jump straight into it. Style. Do you style. have a photography style? Me? Yeah. I have many. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so like, it, it's something that I kind of, I don't feel a style would suit me, if that makes sense. That, I know that might sound really weird, right? But I'm going to elaborate. I shoot a lot of stuff. I shoot... Obviously, I, I, I did shoot gigs. We won't get into that too much. Um, no, we won't. I take portraits. I take landscapes. I drone shots, photographs of my animals. As, we, as we've said before, I just love photography. And I don't think I could find a style. Obviously, that would, that would suit a lot of genres. Um, and then even at that... Uh, I tend to edit, and I've only noticed this only recently as well. I tend to edit like based on my mood and it's not even, it's not even planned. Yeah. You know, like, so like if, if I'm in like a really, really, like, you know, the, the tree shot I posted there last week. Yeah. And it was quite vibrant and quite colorful. Like that, that's not yeah. the norm. I was obviously particularly happy that day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, that, and that like comes true in the shot. And then if I post like a black and white, maybe I'm feeling a bit like not moody. I don't really do moody too much. Like, but I think how I'm feeling depends on how I edit a photo, um, which is mad, but it's also totally understandable because as an artist, I hate that, but yeah, it's a thing. What? It's a thing. Yeah. As an, as an artist, like that, that's For how those of you who are, who are not watching it, Kev, uh, the inverted comments. I, I, uh, I went, I gesture. went for it. I went for yeah. it. Um, yeah, like as an artist, like that that's how we express ourselves, isn't it? Sure, our photography. So mm. that, you're that at, makes, yeah. You're that, after touching on something very interesting there already about your editing style depending on what mood you're in. Absolutely. I think that that's a is, huge factor. I've never even thought of that. Really? And I don't think I I don't think I work that way because Oh, really? Nice. Because I edit I edit to suit the photograph, like not the mood I'm in. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, like I some photographs that. sit well. Like I, I, I honestly think that photo you took, it, it suited it being so vibrant because it had yeah. a lot of sky yeah. in it. Like so that blue really popped and even the, the oranges on the tree or the, you know, you kind of had a bit of crushed blacks in there as well. Yep. That suited that scene. So yeah. regardless of whether you were happy or not that day, they just suited that but scene. See, so the thing that, is, I was going to do that in black and white. Yeah. That but image, I could see it working as a black and white because of the tone range. Like, yeah, that image was going to be black and white. And then I just went, no, let's just try it. And, and then the way That's it interesting. Ended. Yeah. Um, but I see, always find like, uh, you could look back and see like, you know, you could see 
if, if it's like a dark image, maybe I'm a bit sleepy that day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or if, you know, like it, it, it can be anything that, and I, I, I definitely find that my mood is, is definitely projected into my photography. Do you know and what? More so my edit than anything. I, I, I kind of envy that because that's, you're almost, you're really immersing yourself in the, the, the artistic process there. Like, yeah. And it's I mean? not even intentional though, because I, I yeah. could look back and be like, Jesus, look, I've posted three black and white images in a row here. And then I'm like, oh yeah, like, you know, I had a crap day in work and then this and that, and I was stressed and, and then, and then, yeah, you post like a big, bright, you know, and then a big, bright, vibrant shot. I'm like, oh yeah, like that was the day my niece was born or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that was, and then you're kind of like, you, you, I link them up and go, yeah, there, there's definitely a correlation between kind of how I am at that exact moment uh, and uh, of editing the photo and then uh, how, how I was feeling. So it's, Jeez, that's it's, mad. That, it's that, that, that never room. even came on my radar, to be honest. Yeah. Never yeah. came my radar. Like when I edit my images, I edit them to get the best out of the scene. And not saying that you don't get the best out of the scene, but oh, like, yeah. you know, I edit it to suit the photograph at that time. Like, and I have yeah. certain ways to edit different times of day and different compositions and stuff. Of but bringing it back to the style, um, like if you go onto Instagram, sometimes, especially in landscape, there's some very recognizable styles. Like, in landscape photography, we all know like the moody grams, like the like, you know, the desaturated blues and very moody. Oh, kind of absolutely. Stuff. Like Norway, a lot of the Norway, Icelandic, all that kind of stuff is like that, you know, like yellow jacket guys standing on a cliff, <laughs> yeah, desaturated. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's yeah. a very recognizable style. But that's for me, that's one of the few recognizable styles within landscape photography. I think landscape photography is very open to, to various different styles. Like, I mean, I yeah. shoot everything from woodland to astro to mountains to rivers it doesn't to misty lakes it doesn't matter like once it's within landscape photography i shoot it so i'm like you i don't have a style i mean if someone flicked down through my instagram they'll see a, like literally a jack of all trades like yes and yes that's okay like do you know like this is the thing that i kind of wanted to say and like it's if you have a distinct style then brilliant like don't you know, go with that um yep. like one person who swings to mind straight away is column c on instagram class photographer very moody kind of images but you just know it's one of his shots do you know yeah, um, yeah, yeah. another photographer is orla fleming orla so ghzd i think or so we all know orla's, we all know <laughs> we all orla's, know orla, orla's yeah. class orla's yeah. orla's cl savage but she has a quite a recognizable style Definitely. Michael McKillicuddy has a very recognizable art and style. So, it does. but for me, I don't. Um, I think Majestic Dublin as well. He's he's come on leaps and bounds. First of all, like he's because um, he he's still relatively new on the block to it. You know, in terms of like Instagram and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and he's just like honestly talk about putting the work in and you know, really kind of developing his own soul. And yes, he, he, he's obviously a fan of the Orton effect, and, but he does it really well. Mm. Uh, Cause you don't really see the Orton effect on like street photography and on like city. No. Um, no. But he does it quite well. And he, he has a style like put it this way. If you're scrolling through Instagram, you know, it's his shop before you see the name, you know, um, Paul Burke. Paul has a very uh, recognizable yes. uh, cityscape style. Like he shoots around Dublin. If anyone doesn't know Paul's work, phenomenal. Like Paul's work is so good. Neon blues, reds. It's it's, yeah. it's a, his editing style is so cool, and you'll always know Perfect. Paul's images. Same um, with with Neville, Lawless Ireland. Hundred percent. His no levels work. So when he he was going through like that, um, what's the name of that film that bloody blind boy is constantly talking about? Blade Runner. Blade Runner. He, when he was when Neville was going through his Blade Runner phase, dear God, like those shots, man. Were <laughs> I've, so never good. I've never I've seen Blade Runner. I've never seen, Blade seen it. But it's that's exactly how I visioned it, even before I'd seen it. You know what I mean? Like because of how yeah. Blade I would speak about it. Um, yeah. Like Neville Lawless, they were so good. Class. Uh, but like, so is it is it fair to say that? And I think this is fair to say that within different genres of photography, it can be sometimes easier to develop a set style. Like, yeah, I would, I would say so. And I, I'd say maybe 
in other in certain genres of in, of photography, it's important to maybe try find a style. Yeah. Know? Um, and yeah. like if you look at Rachel, Rachel Tallybert, like she has absolutely nailed down her style. She's good. Yeah. Um, and it's top, you know, top, top of the class, like phenomenal, yeah. you know, yeah. um, uh, you know, unrivaled in my opinion. Um, and I think that that's, that's why she's unrivaled because she has her style. She does it perfectly and she executes the shots perfectly. Um, and then I think in, in like street photography, I think street photography it's that's a different ball game altogether. And I think for you to stand out because street photography can be deemed as easy because kind of anyone can take photographs on the street. You know, you don't necessarily need like a tripod. You don't need filters. You don't need to set up, you know, a lot of it is just kind of snap and go to an extent, you know, um, and to try and develop your own style is really where you will stand out apart, you know, over other people. So I, yeah. think it's, I think that's that's where it becomes quite important to have a style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. With landscape photography, I think you could almost hamper your creativity, and yeah. you could almost it, it could having a style could become a hindrance on on your photography. Um, you could hamper. You could. This is so true, right? And I'm actually glad you mentioned that because you could actually hamper your opportunities to shoot. Like so. Like yep. I think is landscape photography like as a an overarching genre. It's probably the only one that has so many different little subgenres. Yeah, does that make so. sense? So like absolutely within landscape photography, you have you have astro, you'd yep. have woodland. Let's say you have mountainscapes. Do you know what I mean? You have all these different <laughs> different genres. Yeah, almost within landscape photography, um. Oh yeah, like landscape photography is very is fairly broad when you look at it because you, you so can, maybe can that's, even include yeah. seascapes in that, you know. Yeah, seascapes. So maybe that's why you don't have a set. I well, some landscape photographers don't have a set style, but you see, like a style. I think when we hear the word style, we automatically think of a certain look in our head, don't we? Yes. Yeah. So absolutely. A style could be a genre. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like. If you're starting out as a photographer, I think it is very important to try out different genres and different, do you know what I mean? Different genres, different photographs, just take any image you want. And like for me, a style should be developed naturally. It shouldn't be forced. Yep. If you're forcing something, especially in photography, it's 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 not meant to happen. Okay. Like yep. something like photography, it's meant to come from your unconscious mind, which is just unforced, like, you know, and it happens naturally. So yep. When you start, you might find yourself slowly then gravitating towards a certain genre or certain style of photograph that you like. And like, don't question that. Just if you, if that feels right, just go with it. Do you know what I mean? And then you might start to develop your style. Yeah, I think, I mean, like definitely having a style in in mind or like, sorry, trying to achieve a style or, you know, having that as like, you know, you want your photography to be recognizable as you is nowhere near a bad thing at all. Like that's, no, that's fantastic. Um, but I just don't let that limit what you're going to be shooting, you know, because it, it can, it can hinder you then and it can kind of take the fun out of it sometimes. And we don't want that. Yeah. That must, that that's one thing is probably tough, especially in these times. If you had like a set style that you obviously can't shoot since the pandemic yeah, yeah. started, like yeah, that would course. really, but that's that, that, and that's a good point. So your style, your style shouldn't put you into one box, and you can't leave that box. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Like I'm trying to think of it from a concert photography point of view. Yeah, like, I was about to ask. It's, I think there there are a few like and look, there are people I've mentioned on the podcast before, so I do apologize. I mean, and it's not just because they're my mates; it's because. They're people I look up to because they're fantastic photographers. But like Ray, it's Ray Kyo again this time. <laughs> um, Ray is class though. He's yeah, so like he's Ray. Ray definitely has a style, you know. And you, like I, I can spot a Ray shot from a mile away, and yeah. and that just goes to show that 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 it's him, you know, and that he has his style nailed down. Um, but like if you look at the likes of like R- Roshin, for example, like Im- imagery, imagery by Row, imagery dot boy dot row is her instagram name uh, and okay. roshi and murphy her style so she does a lot of portraits as well as uh, like a lot of uh, artist portraits as well as 
uh, live stuff. Her her artistic portraits of musicians, I feel she has that style nailed down. It's just really clean, really clear. You know, I, it's hard to explain. But yeah. once again, when I see a shot, I kind of go, ah, that that's got to be that's got to be a Roisin shot. Roisin's class. Mm. She, she's so lovely. So that is when you have a recognizable style when someone can see your photograph and know who took it. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Um, no, maybe I don't think I have a style. But I don't think told, you do. I don't, people I, I, told me that when they've seen an image before, like let's say maybe on a hub or even online or something, before they know who, before they see the name, they knew it was taken by me. Really? So, yeah, which is interesting. Um, now, you know, I'm, know why... I'm always a big fan of like bigging you up and, you know, complimenting you to the hilt because um, I love Thanks. you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you have a so, but I don't, I'm not going to say that that's a bad thing at all. Okay. I do yeah, I'd agree maybe, with you. Maybe your woodland photography has a style. And I think maybe, I think you've got many styles, actually. If, you, if, you, if I and, was and to. That, that could be the reason. Yeah, when I was trying to think, I was I was writing down stuff today and um, kind of gathering my thoughts on this topic. And one thing I would say is that I don't maybe have a style, but I do have a certain set of conditions I love to shoot. And a lot of time, that's kind of the the kind of golden hour landscapes, really nice. I, I love to use light, like, and I know that sounds yes. really cliche in landscape. You're a big fan of side light, aren't you? Love side light. I I, anytime, side light. anytime I, th- I see any shot with side light, I think of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like no matter, no matter who's posted it, or no matter where it is, I think of you when I see side light. It's the most underrated tip I can give any landscape photographer, like especially when they're starting out. Okay, because we don't know how to control it. Like we don't know how to exposure blend. Position the light to the right or the left of your frame. You you don't have a big fireball in your shot, and you have this beautiful light coming in. So yeah, I love using side lights. So that would be thing I think one quite recognizable style yeah. for me. And I love I love mist and fog. Like that's probably another one that's yeah. quite recognizable. Um but other than that I don't and, and and you know what? I love it. I love being able to shoot everything and anything. Do you know? Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Like I, I just think like as I said, you know, if you have your style and it works for you, happy days. Yeah. You know, and if it's not limiting you at all, deadly. Like that's that's a massive bonus. But I like to be able to just, I mean, people have said to me before, because I've, I've, I've toyed with the idea, like obviously back in the day of having like a, a concert page and, uh, a, you know, just an everything else kind of page. And a lot of people are like, no, like they love the unpredictability of my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah, are you fair enough? Um, One minute it could be a cat, like the next yeah. minute it could be Billie Eilish. Like. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I feel like so many people said like, no, don't do it at all. Like they love that. And I'm like, yeah, all right, fair enough. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I got, you know, it's just, once again, even like depending on, like, look, take away the last year because without gigs, but even when I had gigs, like, even if I if I was going from posting a, like, there was no structure to what I was going to post. Like, there wasn't yeah, yeah. like, oh, I'll do a gig, then a person, then a, a bloody, you know, a landscape shot. It was just like, how was I feeling that day? You know, yeah. what, you know, and I just post what I kind of felt like posting. It was never, and it still isn't like what's going to get more likes or whatever, because landscape, strangely enough, landscape photography gets more likes on Instagram than like concert shots. Does it? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But I get more I, pleasure from a, a concert shot. I think that's because the majority of the community, a lot of the community is landscape photographers. Of course. You know? Absolutely. But, um, Bringing it back to the bringing it back to the style, um, like what I'd be saying to photographers is like, don't worry if you're not developing a style. Like what what I would be more concerned about for a photographer is developing a sense of ability. So what that means is learning about compositions, scenes, skills that you be that you get comfortable with. Like that should be your priority. And like as a byproduct, then. It's it's like running, right? Or it's like it's like training. Okay, the most beneficial thing from exercise and training is the endorphins it gives off and how happy it makes you. Uh, a, a positive byproduct of that is that it gets you fit and your body looks good. Okay, so by you developing this sense of composition and skills and techniques and if that you become comfortable with, a positive byproduct of that might be you developing your own style. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Is that a good analogy to use? That is fantastic. Um, because Thanks. look, at the end of the day, all we want is, and, and all you should want is to just be enjoying your photography. So yeah. You yeah. know, like don't, don't let, like don't don't be too much in your head that because that, that can happen you know if you're like overthinking it yeah if you're overthinking and you really want you're trying to nail down this style like yeah it can, it can just get in the way of actually being yeah. you know doing but, what you but should but there's nothing doing. wrong with having a style like not at all um, it, it just shouldn't all. it just shouldn't probably become an obsession yeah. you know um, um it's kind of, it's like kind of makes, this, makes me think about presets too as well because like yeah. style style can be kind of in that way as well if you look at like the, the, the teal and orange thing like that style style is very broad if you, if you think of style yeah. style could be your genre style could be your editing style style could be a lot of things yeah um so it could like, be simply the same scene that you shoot like the same type of scene yeah Do you know so like it, yeah. it's it's, it's it's something to think about well like you know obviously i had a rant on episode one about presets i think it was um, was it episode one was it was episode one yeah <laughs> like and i just want to say again i don't hate presets i just don't want people paying for presets because there's no yeah. need um, you can create your own you can create your own it's actually uh sean will, will vouch for this anytime i see uh before and after shot on instagram uh on a story now i'll screenshot the before shot yeah, and I'll try replicate the after as close as I can. Uh, he gets them pretty close, planet. in fairness. They're pretty close, and that's like oh, you have an attention span of a goldfish, so probably about three minutes. Um, in Lightroom, yeah. Don't buy presets, lads. But, <laughs> but if you have a preset, and that helps with your style, deadly happy days. Yeah. Now, yeah. one genre where I do think a style is very beneficial is in, is in wedding photography. Because oh, your yes. your clients will recognize your style, Absolutely. and that is that's what will get you business. That you know is, what I mean, that is fantastic. Uh, th- yeah, yeah. Uh, Ronan, um, yeah. what do you think, Ronan? Okay, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, Ronan agrees. <laughs> he agrees with Sean, and he also called me a gobshoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, me. Thanks. <laughs> And he also um, went back into his out of focus area. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Sean, actually, that is a great tip in fairness because. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Wedding like, photographers. We, we, wedding photographers and uh, couples. Like couples. I'd know Ronan's. Them. I'd know Ronan shot now if I saw it in a wedding. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. Um, because it's yeah. more likely it's a very kind of candid documentary style um, shot, you know candid um, documentary but it's a bit it's a bit airy you know mm. it's 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 really clean and it's not and it's punchy yeah yeah he gets his you know colors I mean? nice yeah mm. he does he really does um there's another there's another wedding photographer then um in limerick black diamond photography and oh, he lovely yeah another, another very good photographer but you know his style as well you know so like I, that that's why when it came into my head so i think if you're doing client work a client is paying for your style, like essentially, aren't they? Like that's why they book yes. you. Like, yeah, absolutely. So Unless that's you're an mates. area where it would be impossible. Where no, it's where, that's an area where it would be uh, very beneficial, you know. Yeah, I definitely, definitely agree. And um, that's a really good show. That would have gone. That would have gone past me. Yeah, jeez, I'm telling you, like, you don't rest at me, Kev. I know you don't. You don't actually. You, you don't no, rest at me at all. I, <laughs> I, I, I. I, I Hey, right, Kev. You're recording this, aren't you? Yeah. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm leaving this in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I almost got sick. (laughs) (laughs) The look, uh, like, listeners, the look. And his, I, I, he, Kevin, the color actually drained from your face. Holy shit! I was like, oh my god! I was like, do I, do I? How can I say anything? <laughs> the color, man, the color is gone from oh, your man. face. Honestly. I swear to God, I almost got sick there. <laughs> <sighs> so if you're not from, well, yeah, obviously, know that we record the podcast, but we're we're recording through Zoom now, seeing as we're doing the uh, the video as well. And I said that I could, I'd record it um, uh, instead of Kevin. So, 
Oh, he's a um, he's a shook man now. Oh he's my god! Man. Yeah, I'm I am recording. Broken. I am recording. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, I think um, I, I just I touched off my mouse by mistake, and the screen like, like the options popped up, and I just I just saw an option to record, and I almost got sick. <laughs> Can you imagine? After such a good chat, after such a right good now. opening chat. Holy, oh, holy but, um, God. Yeah, kind of rounding up the uh the, the style, the style discussion. Um I think as I said, it should happen naturally, it should not be forced, you know. Um don't get too bogged down in in, in I, I I like in getting a certain style. I'd be got more prioritizing um prioritizing improving your skills, do you know what I mean? As a photographer. Yeah. That's exactly it. Mm, yeah, I've just, I've um, just caught, I've caught my breath back there. Sorry. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. I'll, I'll give you a chance. Are you okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, well, this is a perfect time to go into our next topic. Um, Kev. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Kev is back from his wee. Sorry about that, lads. Uh, man's got to do what a man's got to do. You know what I mean? 100p, 100p. Pardon the pun. That was 100%. It was sharp for 100%, but then I realized I was saying 100p and you just can't for a p. Um, right, Look, next I'm up happy. on the tripod, we are discussing when can you start calling yourself a good photographer? Like, is there a stage when you can say, yes, I am a good photographer? Can, and, I, throw, can, can I throw this to you first, Sean? Oh, rather, rather than you throwing it to me first. No, I did just do that. I did. Host of this thing. Oh no! Exactly. Um, you weren't expecting this. Yeah, I wasn't expecting at all. I was. Ex- I was gonna. I was gonna throw it to you and then gather my thoughts because I haven't. I don't really know how I'm gonna approach this. Firstly, right, I'll say, as Irish people, a lot of us aren't good at giving ourselves credit. I think. Fact. Firstly, um, we are afraid to give ourselves credit f- for fear of sounding arrogant or cocky or whatever what have you so i'll come straight out and say it i'm a good photographer yes you are i know i'm a good photographer because i put a lot of work into my photography um and i I put hours into my photography like countless hours people don't see the amount of work that i put in um and i have taken images that i know people like which kind of reinforces my my thought process that okay maybe i'm doing something right here um i've gotten jobs from my photography which might is another thing that might kind of you know, say okay well you were doing something right here as well and yep. i've i've seen other people's work um and i know that i'm doing I, i'm kind of on the right track and it just feels right you know no for fear of you all saying oh sean is one cocky bastard <laughs> okay well you see uh, in fairness sean you're only saying stuff that i would say about you <laughs> so like yeah. don't worry <laughs> no but i think as 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 people we should be able to say this like you know now the question was when can you start saying this or how do you know that you can start saying this well for me like if it comes to a stage where you've put countless countless hours into something like photography then you're going to get good at it okay? and it's as simple as that if you're doing now if you're doing the right things which is upskilling learning studying other people's work reading watching youtube okay all those things then you will become a good photographer all right the caveat with this is that there's no finish line so it's not that absolutely absolutely it's not that okay sean's a good photographer now kevin's a good photographer ron's a good photographer john whoever that that's it now you're done yeah like sean's made it now like he he is the photographer he has no learning left to do no like there is so much, so much that I have to learn and that I have to upskill in to to further myself. I I feel like I've hit a plateau now at the moment, so I need to find how I'm gonna hit that next level. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. how do you know you're a good photographer? When can you start saying that? I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but if people tell you online that you're doing something good, then yeah, like don't not reading too much into the social media side of things. Do you know, like. As as Sean Tucker said, there's cats on Instagram getting millions of likes. Doesn't mean it's a good. Oh photograph. my god, I saw that the other day, and that, yeah. like, that was so true. Photograph? So true, no. man. Do you know what I mean? But 
if we read into the like situation, then yeah, it is good for our graph, you know, which obviously that doesn't work. But um, if people tell you your work is good and if you start building traction online, then likelihood is if you're in photography, then you're doing something right. Yes. Yeah. Do you know? I would, I would absolutely agree with that. And um, on the on. flip side of that, so like I, I always second guess my work like constantly. Which is strange because, you know, most people who know me know that I'm like a, a very blase about most things. Um, but it came up, like there was a topic I was listen to in listening to a clubhouse conversation the other day. I can't remember who or where it was or whatever. They're talking about competitions and would you ever enter like your photography into a competition? No, I didn't speak, but I was like, no, I wouldn't because I don't think, like sometimes I think like my work wouldn't be good enough because I, I would always second guess my my work always yeah you know um yeah. and then uh, this even boils back down to like i think it was episode one again or maybe episode two where he spoke about printing and i was like i don't print i don't print my work at all because like sometimes i don't think it's good enough and like if people ask me for a print i'm like uh yeah i could do it but i don't and it boils down to me like just kind of second guessing my work um which is mad because I know deep down, like I know I, I have an eye and I'm a good photographer. Yeah. And, you know, I've put a lot of work into it and I've watched YouTube. I've learned a lot. I've spent hours, you know, just playing around with stuff on Lightroom and trying different things. And, you know, Ronan has taught me an awful lot. Like I spent two days out with Ronan at different points and like uh, invaluable the stuff he taught me. Yeah. Um, that it's definitely improved with photography. And like, I know that, yeah, okay. I am, I am actually quite a cool photographer, but it's just the doubt does creep in. And yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's very rare that I'll actually like kind of pat myself on the back and say like, okay, yeah, you're, yeah. A, good, you're a good photographer. Which is, yeah. which is, we, we should be able to do that more, especially now, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like right. give ourselves a break. Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? Just give us a pat on the back. Say, look, you're doing okay. Yeah. That's you it. Wanna, like, if you, if you, if you're sitting down on the couch, and you you're you're thinking, God, I, I sh- it looks okay outside. I should be out taking photos, but you don't feel like it's strong. Oh, that's okay too. Yeah, you know? and like I'm the first to to commend like other photographers if they're doing a great job. And in yeah. in fairness, like the, the the support I have online and you know is phenomenal. Like it's yeah. phenomenal. You know, like yeah, yeah. I mean, the support that we get through the community because look, the community that we're in, they're all sound, aren't they? Yeah, like they're they're absolutely bang on. And this um, is the thing. There's an awful lot of very good for like the like the the good photographers in the community. That's I think this is the point I'm trying to make is like draw that self doubt comes in. The yeah. self doubt comes in because you start comparing yourself to all the other excellent photographers that are in the community. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And it's it it's about striking that healthy relationship or healthy balance between recognizing how good these photographers are but also recognizing that okay well you're doing something right as well you know what i mean Absolutely. and people will tell you like people will tell you so yeah. where, where you're doing right or wrong and it is, i mean it's it, it is a journey as well it's a never-ending yeah. journey at that so like you do have to realize that people are at different points in their journey and people you know people maybe excel faster than others in in the journey that's that's not a that's not saying you know if you're doing it a bit slower than others that you're not good at it 100 you'll get there like it's Mm -hmm. uh, you put the work in and you'll get there because it is it's you know you can tell if someone has an eye for photography from the get-go yeah yeah you can literally from the very start people who are just uploading photos from a phone um you can tell that they have an eye for photography you know that they, yeah. they, they can capture something that maybe other other people would not have seen, and that's what differentiates them from just being, you know, uh, you know, a person, a person, snapper, a snapper to a photographer. Yeah, and then and then it's all about kind of learn, you know, what you learn after that. Then is kind of when you can start saying, okay, I'm I'm a good photographer. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. like I know you know look I'm a host of photography podcast thing hopefully I, I, know, I know something <laughs> yeah. about photography yeah it would, it would, yeah, it would be it would probably be a bit a bit yeah. ironic if we weren't if we yeah. were good photographers um, but you know like yeah I think what you said is absolutely right like you know don't be comparing yourself to 
someone who's who's further along the journey than you and that doesn't necessarily mean they've been doing it longer than you i mean mm. it just means that they're they're at a certain point that is different than you and that's absolutely fine um you know it's it's all about just traveling along the journey and and making sure you kind of stay on the tracks i'm going to throw the cat among the pigeons here in a second oh, um oh. Because because photography is is quite subjective. Yes. What like do we determine as good? Inverted commas good. Like is good sharp? Do you know what I mean? Like do like obviously all the kind of basics that a photo should be, like in focus, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say I would say there's 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 definitely um a couple of boxes. Little that so need, bellies that need to be like ticked. Yeah, look yeah. I think I think in focus is a must. Yeah. Um it has to be pleasing on the eye. Look, it has yeah. to be, you know. I mean, that's the thing. You could have like a really sharp, perfectly executed shot of something that doesn't look right. And then is that, you know, it's a great photograph maybe, but is it pleasing to look at? It's so weird. Photography is so subjective. It is because like you have pleasing images like a serene lake scene like behind me and then you could have an incredibly moody black and white image that has this fantastic compositional elements and tonal range and like to me that's an excellent photograph yeah but to other people it might not look pleasing to the eye it's it's, it's funny right and i don't know has does anyone else notice this um and like to the untrained eye look that's that's i think that's the politest way of calling people who don't do photography like so absolutely just the untrained eye, like that's not an insult to them. It's just that they're not they're not aware of the kind of the thought process that we're aware of. Yep. Um. But a lot of my family members would they're not into photography, or any my a lot of my friends aren't like. So if I ever show them like parents, especially and siblings, like an image, um, that has really strong compositional elements, like and edited nicely and everything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes like, oh yeah, that's nice. And then, like, I could go out there with the draw and literally just point it in one direction, take a photo, and like, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, like, you know, I always find as well, like, as you said, the untrained eye, like, they will always be gravitated towards, like, super saturated shots. Color. Yeah. They, they Color, love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's so and, purple, it's black. Like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. the, like, oh, oh my God, that's a great show. You know what I mean? Like, oh, wow. I'm like, all right, Ma, relax with you for God's sake. Yeah, seat. yeah, it's funny. Um, See, this is this is where it comes in, like you know, like yeah. good photographers and so. I mean, so like my like, just to go back to that for one second, like obviously I have a family WhatsApp group, as I'm sure most people do, and I just like I just drop a couple of photos in, like just random photos throughout the day or throughout the year or whatever, and uh, like I can't even count on the amount of bones I have in my body at this stage. You know, the times my mother has said, I'd love that on the wall. I'm like, all right, man, relax. Like, it's a photograph of, like, two forks on a counter. You know, like, <laughs> relax. Oh, that, I'd love that blown up. That'd look great on the wall. Yeah, it's such a, oh, it's all funny. Right, like, it is. Um, so this is where it comes out to, like, you know, like, subjective and good photographers and, and whatnot. Um, but I think... And I, I actually have a video planned on this um, because of it's a, it's a shot I took and this is what gave me the idea for the video. And I posted it last week of a sunrise uh, with the fog under a bit of fog and really vibrant, colourful shot. Kind of unusual for me. Um, do you know what I'm on about? I posted it last yep. Monday morning. And it was a really, it was a fail. It was a really odd morning. There was like in one part of the uh, area there was fog. Then I drive up and there was no fog. It was kind of, and I was actually just, I actually just was driving home. I looked down to Valley and I was like, oh, that's nice. And I literally just... It was lovely. And Kelly photo was, shot. The thing with that shot for me as well is that you posted on a Monday morning, which surprised me. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> just went out the window, all your rules, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, yeah. Usually it's like nine o'clock at night I post. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but it was post, gorgeous like, though. But I, I literally just, I snapped it. And like, I it, it takes four minutes from that from that location, literally four minutes to drive to my house. I got in the door, I transferred it over to my phone through the Wi-Fi and the camera, quick edit and Lightroom, bang, upload. Yep. But the point is that I started thinking about composition, like, and well, you know, we get hung up with this word of composition, like leading lines and framing and all this stuff. And 
breaking it down into base simple terms like composition is just a makeup of something like the composition of a cake is its ingredients like. so i mean the composition of that image is just like the color and a bit of fog nice bit of atmosphere and i suppose there's, there's there maybe there's a layer or two there but it's not like fundamentally like the best compositional image i've ever taken but i was like Do you know what sean give yourself a break like so it's yeah. a nice photo so but even at that i think it did kind of abide by like the rule of thirds to an extent because you've got like you know you've got like certain layers in the first third and then other layers and like the third third yeah but i think that was just nature kind of being sound as well yeah i, I think so as well and the fact that you know i mean like 200 mil helped as well to yeah of course the with the compression um, um yeah, so I, think, I mean i don't think you should get bogged down by that either that's interesting so maybe that's how you kind of know when you're at a good enough stage of photography that unknowns to yourselves you pick out these images that kind of are compositionally okay without kind of thinking too much about it yeah possibly that's I would, I would, that, that's your eye like that's your eye isn't it you're just developing that, an eye that, that is the eye i would say so because i mean like if you if you were to hand 10 photographers and then 10 like non-photographers a camera and set out in the same spot the photographers would get every time would get would get the better shot 100 percent. and even even i mean even if it was down to like you know let's say a non-photographer like they'd probably they'd, they'd overthink stuff so yeah. they'd try get low and they'd try to do all these cool like quirky things but the photographer would just get the right shot generally speaking yeah. And I think, yeah, that that's de- that's down to the fact that we just have that eye, and we have that, you know, ability. A thought process. Exactly. If every every beginner photographer, including me, always like goes down really low to the ground. Absolutely. The tripod doesn't extend past the first first column. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but that's that's an interesting. That was a, that's an interesting. It's an interesting topic. Um, like can I, there's no real it's a hard one Connor's specific question was how do you know when you can start calling yourself a good photographer and I suppose it's kind of a combination of a different thing of a couple of different things what we've spoken about you know um, for yeah. me another, a, a, big, a, a kind of a big one now would be if someone wants to buy your print I think if someone wants to buy a photograph and put it on their wall then you're doing something okay like yeah, no, yeah. Her, not, I mean, not, not your mammy, no, like, you know, someone outside I, of your family. Ma- Mary Hennessy is absolutely, she's a fiend for my prints on. Like, <laughs> honestly, swear to God. She's like, by the sounds of things, like, she just wants a wallpaper of every photo I've ever taken combined oh. to one roll and just put up along the mantelpiece. Um, yeah, but no, like, yeah, I think that you're absolutely right there. Um and rem- we said this again at the very first episode. If someone wants to buy your print, let them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let, let them. them. You know what I mean, like hundred percent. They're coming to you. Like I've uh, honestly, I've turned down, not turned down, but I've like, refused or not followed through with loads of print requests. That's ridiculous. Mad. Like here, no, I don't want your money. Thank you very much. <laughs> do it. If someone says they want to print, do it because a. That means they love your photo so much that they want to hang it on your wall. Yeah. And B, you can make money off your passion. Just go for yeah. it. Yeah. It's like a I wouldn't set out to sell prints. Like some people will, and that's absolutely amazing. I think they deserve to do so. Um, but if someone reaches out to you and says, can I buy a print of this photograph for this? Go for it, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Dead right. So... That's kind of how you know you're doing something right, you know. Um, yep. There's no set answer for it, and it comes. But it, what I would say, what I, I can't stress this enough: have confidence in your ability. Don't be afraid to pat yourself on the back and say, "Okay, I'm doing a good job." Also, don't be afraid to reach out for constructive feedback. Okay. Huge, um, huge point. Constructive yeah. feedback, because most people take constructive criticism, which I'm glad yeah. they didn't, because I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of that term or that saying because yeah. it's you know it's it's already kind of set up to fail like it, that's a negative word and mm-hmm. i don't like that constructive feedback is huge though i mean like I, I seek that all the time i mean myself sean and ronan have a whatsapp group and we'd send photos in there constantly saying what do you think of this 
And it's not, you know, give me plaudits. It's like, tell me, what do you think of this? Like, tell me, yeah, what do we need to do? Like, are, are, is there, you know, are the highlights too high? Do I need to drop them down? Like, it, to have photographer friends and people you can bounce things off is huge because sometimes you can get so caught up in an image. You know yourself, Sean, like you can get so like wrapped up in it that you think like, oh man, this is perfect. And you've just missed like one glaringly obvious thing. Yeah. And that's why it's great to have people you can bounce things off. So, you know, do seek that. Like we have the tripod community page for that as well on Facebook. Like it's so good for that. You know, yeah. like it's great. It's great for tips and all, but you can post up a photo. And if you say, you know, can I, can I have some feedback on this? Mm-hmm. Um, just see and see. Yeah. People, people will be, will be honest with you. Like they're not going to roast you or, or, you know, absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, because everyone, everyone's there for a reason. Uh, you know, everyone's at different levels, but they will give you honest feedback and they'll say, maybe you could try this. Maybe you could try a different crop. Maybe try, you know, Mac O'Brien. Uh, yeah. Yeah, crop, exactly. Crop master. Crop master, like Mark O'Brien. Man loves the crop. Um, but like that, the, for, for me, that's, that's a fundamental part of photography. And it's one of the massive benefits of the community we have that you have people there that you can say here any any ideas like any thoughts on this because i'm not maybe maybe i'm not too sure or yeah. on the flip maybe i'm too heavily invested and i think it's perfect and, and it's probably not so 100%. use people 100%. you have 100 percent. that was a really interesting topic really interesting uh connor thanks which, for sending that in which connor was that that sent that in connor 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 oh my god ah oh, did i put you thanks, on the spot i'm sorry thanks, Kev. Thought, this is connor connor is actually Finnegan. Connor is actually head of a clothing brand. This is Connor. Is he? uh, it's, it's called uh, Conquer. Connor ah, Donahue, I think, is his name. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good man, Connor. It says Conquer Donahue. I'm, I'm, pronu- I'm, pr- I'm presuming Connor. It's Connor Donahue. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, um, Connor actually, they kindly reached out to me that they're sent. They, um, they want to send me an old hoodie. Um, I'll take one too, Connor. Conquer. Thank you very much. Uh, look, but, um, thanks. If you, if you have any hats as well, Connor, let me know. Thanks, Sean, Connor, for I sending that in. Answer the phone. Give us, I need to wait again. I'm sorry. It's, it's, okay. it's, I can't help it. It's, okay. It's yeah. that point. For those of you that are still listening, Kevin stops or has to stop for a wee between five and six times per podcast. <laughs> I'll now pause it and when we return, we'll be straight back into the podcast. So, returning from we round six. Oh, I'm sorry, um, lads. Honestly, I, I, I do apologize. Uh, hello again, uh, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. It's now time for the Your Shot feature from oh, yeah. Dara Gorman. Dara Gorman. What a man. Lighthouse, Lighthouse industry, isn't it? Lighthouse. Oh, man. Face. I'm on fire. Yeah. Did you just say you're on fire? I'm on fire. That's my favorite Bruce Springsteen song. Did you know that? Oh, yes. I love it. It's all for you. So it's time now, for the Your Shot feature from Dara Garman, Lighthouse Industries. I'm on okay. fire. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dara is a fantastic photographer. He does nice, some nice, very nice seascapes now. And um, this particular image is of a wave breaking um, that he took in the, in the recent storm. Okay. And there was some fantastic waves in the in the in the storm that just passed so we asked dara to send us on um the image and a bit of a backstory behind it along with the setting so without further ado kev i'm going to read out what dara said okay can't wait i love Brilliant. your shot feature so dara's camera was the canon 1dx and he was using a 7200 uh his settings were a thousand of a second he was at f 5.6 and iso 250 he said he was just trying to get fast enough to capture the motion and also try to remove it from the background to add a little depth. Nice. Okay, so he had, that's why he was using F5.6 to try and get a bit of a shallow depth of field. Yep. Um, I find a place to lie or sit on a reef and pretend I'm a tripod. It's it was, <laughs> it was way too windy to stand up without getting blown about. This allows me to use manual focus. Okay, interesting. I use I don't I I um. I don't use manual focus when I'm shooting wave photography, but that's interesting. I find autofocus hunts way too much with the sea spray. Okay, that makes sense. It would be a joy to use a tripod, 
But with gale force wind, it's not really an option. And having to hide your camera from the sea spray requires some quick action. A background in surfing helps with predicting conditions. Very important. The main factors I consider are swell, height, and direction, the tide, and wind direction. Now, this next part, listeners, is really important. It's some great knowledge that Dara has offered up. Also, the wave period, he says. The time in seconds between each swell line is a huge factor in estimating the power of the waves you want it to be. 14, sorry, yeah, you want it to be 14 seconds at least, but get it around 18 or 20 seconds and things get crazy. This happens about twice a year. Okay. So that he's kind of knowledge the, is unrivaled, yeah. is it? Like that's, that's insane. So he's on about the swell line. The so I, I yeah. assume that's the... Uh, every 18 or 20 seconds he says it gets crazy so I assume every 18 or 20 seconds a large swell of waves comes in so you have the sea conditions in your location sorted well about getting the right light it's a story day in Ireland the light is constantly changing if you put a few hours a day and you're sure to get a moment or two of beautiful side light very very good or maybe a taste of golden hour but that tends to happen at least an hour before sunset I don't know why it just does Um, well the golden hour Dara uh, is the time before sunset and the time after sunrise. That's the golden hour. So that's why it, it occurs an hour before sunset. Um, the problem with big swells with a high period is that they have huge lulls between the action. They're often 20 to 30 minutes of waiting, he says, which is often in hail or showers, yeah, exactly, to keep you entertained. This is when you adopt the penguin position. Okay. Oh, yeah. The penguin position. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The penguin. Uh, Dara has actually told us what the penguin position is. The penguin position is when you place all your camera gear at your feet, camera at your chest, turn your back to the rain and hail, and hunch squat over it until the weather passes. Nice. Yeah. And he says, after a day of this, all your gear is totally soaked with salt water, so it needs a good cleaning and drying out. That's about the height of it, really. <laughs> Class, a typical <laughs> Irish man. Sure, that's about the height of it. <laughs> uh, Dara, thanks very much. And I'm looking at you. I have the image here on my phone. So Dara, um, before I touch on, on the on the shop, because I, I want to, because there's plenty I want to say about it. That is a huge thing. I mean, I, I've I've heard like Rachel said it before, like tripods can get severely damaged by the salt water and the seawater. So do, you know, if you're out shooting waves and you're using a tripod, um, make sure you take your tripod apart, clean it, and get in all the nooks and crannies mm-hmm. because you don't want it to be like eroded. Um now onto it's, the shop. It's, it's a particularly, particularly nice wave image, and the it's, it's the shape. It's phenomenal. Like w- waves for me. Like if you think back from when you were on holidays as a kid, you know, in like Portugal or Spain, you were jumping into waves. Like waves are deadly anyway. Waves are just fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to capture um, to capture a wave the way th- this this wave has been captured, it's it's, it's this almost has a. It's like it's like someone whipping back their hair. Like it's like there's a yeah, full but, arch but it, of the but wave. It's, it's almost like the wave has just stopped. It, it's almost coming in to like encapsulate something. You know, like it's yeah, it looks yeah, like it's almost yeah, about to close that. in and take. You know, like just like oh, you're gone. See you later. I see that. Um, I see like, that. And I love. Yeah, it's the way it's breaking. So he's it, there's obviously a reef or some sort of a. An underwater um, section here. For, for people, for people watching, we're probably gonna. Oh yeah, I'll I'll overlay it. the image, Kev. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> okay. It's yeah for me it's, like um, waves. Yeah, it's class. I, it's very very cool. Wave wave taufi is phenomenal. So, um, isn't it? And like, it's not I, easy. Not easy. I think, I think everyone, the elements. If you're like me, anyway, you try find a face in the waves. I mean, that's just from speaking with Rachel again, um, and. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely like shapes in there that you can spot. It just it's something like, uh, Keen is a Keen Ryan, Keen Ryan ninety two. Keen Ryan, yeah. His his wave photography over the last little while has been nothing short of fantastic as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I, I yeah, just, this is lovely, but this isn't about him. Uh, this Dar, this is Dara's your shot feature. Yes, Ken. apologies, Dara. Apologies. <laughs> no, in, in fairness, Dara, like this is this is absolutely delicious. Like the the amount of different layers even in this one shot like you've got the uh, the bottom right hand side you've got the uh, it's almost like a calm wave you know like a wave you'd expect to see mm. and then it just it just kind of it, it's like a it's like a musical it's like a, it's like a song it grows well, I particularly it's got, like it's got this big is, moment and then yeah. it's kind of just coming back down again 
but it's it, right, it doesn't, right it doesn't come like, down how it started. It comes down still a bit angry, and it's 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 amazing. Go on, Sean. What do you like particularly? The way that uh, he's processed it, so like the background, he's made the background darker. So obviously yeah. the wave just stands out. Then you know, I'm not sure how he done. It. I'm sure I, it's probably through uh, the range masking or something in Lightroom, possibly. Just pull a grad filter down, maybe. And, yes. Um, that's probably what he done. So yeah, look, Dara, brilliant image. Uh, thanks very much for allowing us um to feature on the your shot feature. And uh, yeah, nice one, buddy. Keep up the good work, all right? And remember, it's lighthouse.industries. Uh, lighthouse.industries. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll have it up on the video. And yeah, for those who are watching it, you'll be able to see the image in full high-res, crispy quality. Yeah, not just me, like wave my phone at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right then, Sean. Jesus, sorry. It's okay, Kev. It's okay. Only joking, we're, I'm only just, 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 we're only on episode 46. Yeah, should have by episode 120, hopefully I have it. Like, that's the plan. Or 36. No, 46. 46. Jesus. We're almost, we're, we're almost at the year. Crikey. We're almost at the year mark, lads. Um, wow. Which is, which is mad. It's that a bit scary, mad. to be we'll honest. we have to plan something for the year anniversary. Absolutely. Um, if I, anyone I, I, has I any ideas, let us know. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, that'd be a good shout. That'd be a good shout. Um, Kev, this has been um, a delicious episode, as always. So, this has been great. Uh, thanks for having me, Sean. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for the hat. Um, no worries. I appreciate that. that. That's my payment for this episode. No so, worries. I believe um, next week I'm getting, I'm getting a hoodie. Um, no, in, in all fairness, thank you very much. It was a great episode. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, and thank you. We do hope you listeners enjoyed it too. Sorry, Sean, your host, and go for it. Say what I said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, if Rona was here, he'd just be like, he would he'd, be, he'd, be like this. Yeah, yeah. He'd probably tell you to shut up. Actually, yeah, maybe. Nah, he just give me the disgusted look and yeah, shake his head. Yeah. Um, but worse. listeners, thank you very much for listening. Viewers, this will be available on Wednesday so the podcast release on Tuesday the video goes out on YouTube on Wednesday so please do tune into the video to see the antics and, that goes and on come behind here, the like, scenes subscribe. Jesus Christ it, Kevin <laughs> I'm just hang on like if you're listening was, on Tuesday okay go on subscribe yeah, to the YouTube channel because you know we, we want people to see this like it's just the two of us sitting here having chats um, Sean's in we can make it if we try. <laughs> uh, no, on a serious note, yeah, yeah. Subscribe to our YouTube and and like share it because like YouTube can be shared easily. There's a share button. Just share yeah. it. Yeah, definitely Tell subscribe to the YouTube channel. So like, what out of how are three or four hundred downloads that this will hopefully get on Tuesday? I mean, if you all subscribe to the YouTube channel, let's we should have. 500 subscribers because we have 100 already so maybe okay we'll take out okay yeah, well, we should have about 300 subscribers yeah if each one it. of you and like so, subscribes to the youtube channel we know Please you do. have a youtube account because yeah. i have google four. has one for you i have four google of them at least like so yeah, yeah. subscribe yeah. okay right anyway Thanks anything for else also, before, rate, we, before we finish up rate and review the podcast um on itunes and can you do that on spotify you can't rate or review, but you can share okay. the Spotify one to your Instagram share, story. And tell your if, you're, if, you're to if you're listening, if you're listening on iPhone, um, rate and review the podcast, please. Thank you very much, yeah, it, Evan. It helps. Yeah, love you lots. Stay safe, Ronan. Shawnee, love you too. Ciao, bello. Stay safe. Ronan, um, we listener, love you. Thank you very much for listening, listeners. Without you, sure, we're just three lads talking. Jesus, absolutely. Kevin, but I'm trying to close out the episode. Like, <sighs> I'm just trying to back you up here, Sean. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't need backup. It's episode 46. Fine. Like, Fine. I can close out an episode of my own. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. All the best. Stay safe. One we'll last thing, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next Tuesday. Good luck.